Thank you. Yes, sir. Brother, by the way, I'm just church. You thank you for the pastor. Right? You thank you for all the officers and all the men. You thank you for this wonderful We have come to worship. Yes, Lord. Glory to God. We have come to pray. We come to magnify your most holy Father. Come to thank you for Jesus Christ, our precious Lord. We thank you for the sacrifice you've made. We thank you that we have hope. Hope of eternal life. But I said, He that believe and is baptized shall be saved. We thank you that we're saved. By the grace of God, we have come to work. We have come to pray. We have come to magnify your most holy Continue to bless us. Continue to use us. Your praise and to your glory. Lord, one day the time will come when you will call and we must ask. At that time, we pray that you be able to stand before your God. Be able to walk before us, serve of God. Well done. For a good fight and the victory has been won. Until that time, Lord, have to do. The wrong is to see what the end is going to be. We love you and we thank you. Oh, I said in Jesus' name we pray. And the church, even the living church, the church of the living God. The church said, Amen. And amen.
we got so accustomed to living with thee that we feel it's just a part of life. But I feel a little different now. I feel that God wants to show us His glory. All right. His glory. power. Right. He wants to reveal to us who He yes. who He is. So in the book of Nehemiah, we pick up around the fifth verse. After he had received some news from the homeland. Because right now he's in Persia as a captive. But one thing I like about this story is that his position did not stop him from being faithful. So he gets the news that the homeland is suffering. Years after Ezra had led some of the captives back home to Jerusalem. The city is in turmoil and the enemies of the city wants to keep them in turmoil. The enemy don't want to see them prosper. Remember the story here as we go through it. I told you in time past. People can be so frickle at times. And so here, remember as we go through this, the longest folk can control your thinking. They feel they can treat you any kind of way. But when you break loose, they can no longer control your mindset. You recognize who God is for yourself. You recognize that He came that you may have life. You may have it more abundantly. Glory to God. People will get afraid of you. You become a threat. So it is with our adversary here. The text, let's begin to read because I want you to grasp the historical fact. I'll start with the fourth verse. Well, I'll go back to the third verse. <laughs> and they said unto me, the remnant that were left of the captivity there in the providence are in great affliction and reproach. And the walls of Jerusalem also is broken down, and the gates there were burned with fire. And it came to pass when I heard these words that I sat down and wept. And mourned certain days and fasted, and I prayed before the God of heaven and said, I beseech thee, O Lord, God of heaven, the great and terrible God that keepeth covenant and mercy for them that love him and observe his commandment. Let thine ears now be attended to thy and thine eyes open that thou mayest hear the prayers of thy servant, which I pray before thee now, day and night. For the children of Israel, thy servant, and, and confess the sins of the children of Israel, which we have sinned against thee. Both I and my father's house have sinned, and we have dealt very corruptly against thee, and have not kept the commandments, nor the statute for the judgment which thou commanded thy servant Moses. Remember, I beseech thee the word that thou commanded thy servant Moses, saying, If ye trespass. I will scatter you abroad the nations, but if ye turn unto me and keep my commandments and do them, though there were of you cast out into the uttermost parts of heaven, yet will I gather them from thence and will bring them into the place that I have chosen to set my name there. I stop. 
I want to speak this into your spirit. Believe in God when things seem impossible. Believe in God when things seem impossible. Nehemiah was in a very unique situation because the Bible says he teaches us that he was a cupbearer. Yeah, that's right. The cupbearer was not just one who protected the king's life by right? being sure that no one poisoned him, but he, over the years, he had gained the king's confidence. He had gained the king's trust. And so, even though he was a captive for many years, he served the king of Persia. He served this king. And while serving him, not only uh, protected the king's life, but he somehow or another, the king trusted his advice. He became a good advisor to the king. And, and he never showed any resentment of his position. Even though historians said that uh, he was an eunuch. In other words, they took away his ability to perform or have children. And yet, even though he lost his manhood, as we would say, uh, he was faithful to his position. He was faithful to uh, whatever the king needed him for, he was there. And I'm wondering if God is saying the same thing to the church. Can I trust you to be faithful when things are not in your favor? Can I trust you to uh, do the right thing? Can I trust you to walk upright? Can I trust you to strengthen the feeble knees and the hand that hangs down? Can I trust you to keep praying for your brothers and sisters? Can I trust you to encourage somebody else along the way? Can I trust you with some good word or good advice? Can I trust you with the spirit of God that I place in you? I have you become so complacent. Have you shifted? Nehemiah got the news. First thing he does is he goes into prayer. He goes into prayer. The Bible says that he prays night and day, but not only he's fasting. He's praying that God will give him uh, a vision, give him an avenue to go home. So he can help his people. He has, a, he has, he has a, a drive. He has a, a passion for the things of God. Amen. He has a passion. The walls of Jerusalem is torn down. The protection is not there. He sees the people in turmoil and affliction. He knows that their lifestyle is not up to par. But he knows if he can just get them to understand that God is still a present help. In the time of trouble, and we've come to two and a half years, three years of a pandemic, and I'm wondering how many folk have given up their faith. I'm wondering how many are struggling with their commitment and said church is no longer necessary. The word of God is no longer necessary. But I stop by to tell you, I don't care how affliction will rise and how many things are coming and going, God is still a very present there because He's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. got to remember, you got to remember Jesus, Jesus said when he came off the mountain for Mount Transfiguration, you got to remember you got to remember, he tell, he comes down to the crowd and they surrounded this man who had brought his son to be healed of the disciples and they could not do anything, why? Because they were fighting over position they were fighting over who were going to be in charge. They, they were debating because Jesus had uh, had an inner circle of Peter, James, and John. And no matter how you put it, I just believe that the other nine had issues. Yeah. Just like the church today, how come the pastor is always talking to this one and that one? And 
He said, man, how come he choose this one or that one? And he's overlooking me. But you got to understand, God never overlooks his people. That's and so when Jesus come off the mountain and the man comes to him and with his son says, I brought my child to your disciples, but they could not help them. And Jesus said, he turns to them and, I, and he questioned their faith because he knew that they had been, he had here, he had been constantly preaching the word of faith. He had constantly injecting to them the kingdom of heaven. He had, all, he had spent time with them. They were with him when he worked miracles and there were a time that he had ordained them to go out and lay hands and they came back rejoicing and they said even the devil is subject to our name but at this point in their life they're not concerned about ministry they're only concerned about their position I believe that's what's happening to the church we are more concerned about what people call us instead of who we should be we are more concerned about whether folk pat us on the back and folk stroke our ego and tell us how wonderful we are. But the truth of the matter is, there are folk that are in trouble sitting next to you, but they can't tell you because they can't trust whether you can keep it or not. They can't trust whether you can get a prayer through or not. They don't know whether you will take it to God or you put it on Facebook. They don't know that. But the church has to get back that we become so dependent and faithful to God that no matter what the enemy brings in the church, we can say, no, what form of this shall be able to prosper. And so Jesus uh, took the man and began to heal the young man and he asked him, he said, what, what's wrong? He said, he, he has some kind of ailment and, and some kind of spirit and they cast him in the fire and they cast him in the water and they're trying to destroy my son and I brought him to the church but the only thing the church did when I got there they were talking about who's in charge I hope y'all catch praise the name of the Lord and they were, more, they were more concerned about what title they have and instead of being before the Lord, I believe God is provoking us here. By the way, that we got to get back on our knees. Right, right. We have to get back to seeking oh, the face of God. We have to get back to seeking the things of God. Because yes, the Bible says that you seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, these all these other things shall be added unto you. And we got to understand. Because the Bible, as I taught the class on yesterday in the Lord's prayer. Is that our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. And so then, if that's really true, praise the name of the Lord, and I believe the word of God is true, true, because it's been tried and proven. And so here, he said, thy kingdom come in earth. Praise the name of the Lord, not just this earth, but this earth. But then at the end of that prayer, he reminds us, he said, thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory. So then, if you have God Christ in you, right. you got the kingdom yes, inside Lord. of you. Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Right. And if you got the kingdom inside of you, you got glory and power Lord. in you. Yes. And so what happened to the church? We have allowed the anointing of God to become dormant because we are comfortable in our seats. Because baby, let me tell you, when you want to walk in the things of God, a critic's going to come out the corner. Right. Uh, praise the name of the Lord. Uh, you got to develop thick skin but tender heart. Uh, praise the Lord. Your heart got to be tender but your skin got to get a little thicker. Praise the Lord. It's amazing to me when we were in the world, nothing bothered us. Uh, now we get in church, we get sensitive. Right. Uh, I, 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 I mean, I'm trying to figure this out. Uh, some of us was in the world, we will fight at the drop of a dime. Uh, Y'all ain't gonna help me. Y'all will tear up the house pot. Uh, Y'all will fuss, and you know you say some other words uh, that will dignify. But when you got saved, what happened to you? You sit there and let anything go by. And I'm saying, Lord, what happened to us? He said, we got comfortable. Your position uh, got you 
just get comfortable zone. But, but when the news come about your brother and sister struggling, do it moves you enough to pray for them? Do it moves you enough to go, uh, uh, you know, bombard heaven for them? Sometimes your prayer ain't got to be about you. Sometimes it is of God that just lay somebody in your spirit. And I'm wondering, praise the Lord. Well, can let me slow down a little bit here. I'm just wondering, you know, because I've been there and I know how it is. Praise the Lord, I've been in this way long enough, you know, to feel some drives and, and experience some things. There were times that God put certain people in my spirit. You know, I pray when I'm a little quick managing their prayers, you know. You know what must do it? Just throw some words out there. But Lord, when the songs hit my life, all of a sudden I was laying on the floor. I was praying like I had no sense. Because God, I need a breakthrough. I wish I had some real sense in here. But God remind me, the same way you pray for you, I need you to hear a seat for your brother and sister. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I need to hear a prayer through just for you. And so Jesus rebuked this demon out of this young boy. And he becomes healed, delivered. And then Jesus turned to the disciples and because they wondered why they couldn't do it. So Jesus had to rebuke them because of their unbelief. He said, some things when they come by prayer and fasting. Let me help some of you out some more. The problem with most believers, we are not disciplined. We don't have discipline in our spiritual walk. We rip and run and do everything in the natural. But when it comes to God, we do the same thing. We don't take the time to hear from the Lord. We don't take the time to shut down ourselves and let the Lord speak to us. I love the song that the song that says, speak to my heart, Lord. Speak to my heart. To hear a word from you. To one of the songwriters said, Trust in him at all times. Uh, all you people, pour out your heart before him. For God is a refuge for us. I want you to know he's a very present help in a time of trouble. Well, no matter what you're going through, and sometimes God will position you in a situation not for you. Right. He'll only position you to see whether you're willing to help somebody else. Sometimes God will position you and cause you to stay there. And you wonder why I'm not being delivered. It's not your time yet. Because he's got to set up a situation so he can prove to you who he is. Like I heard one speaker say, a situation brings on a revelation. And sometimes we want revelation from God, but we don't want to sit, go through the situation. But brothers and sisters, Nehemiah, he was in the king's palace. He was a cupbearer to the king. He understood his responsibility. Fervent he was. A unit that he was. They took away his ability. They took away his authority. One, two, three. I keep this one. I praise the Lord. He took away his ability to do what he needs to do. The, the thing was, he was a personal advisor. He had gained the king's trust. The king could confide in him. I'm wondering how many saints who sit here, how many of us who come to church Sunday after Sunday, Bible study after Bible study, can folk really confide in us? Can they say, you know, I can trust that believer. I can know the things to him, I won't hear it again. I know he need a prayer proof from that. God is shaking us up out of our comfortable zone. I believe God is looking for some power sticks. He's looking for some saints who's real. Way back somebody and I said, Oh, you're real, son. Uh, don't be a phony in the house. God looking for somebody to stand up for his people. Somebody to be an intercessor. Somebody who's willing to lay on the floor. Give up their own ability to help someone else. Hallelujah. Our young men and young women. Our mothers, they need 
you. Yes. Father's son needs you. I believe God is saying to by the way. I put up with you long enough. I need you to shake the tree. I need you to shake off the dead leaves. I need you to shake off the dead fruits. I need you to grow again. I want to prosper you. In my power, in my anointing. But you sit there and you're comfortable. And so now trials will come. But I heard Proverbs say, most men will proclaim everyone his own goodness. Hold on, brothers. Most men will proclaim his own goodness. But he said, but who can find a faithful man? When the Lord comes, will he find a faithful servant? When the Lord comes back, what will he find you doing? Have you gone back to the world? Or are you still seeking the kingdom? Are you going back into the club? Y'all ain't going to talk to me. Are you going back to that bed God delivered you out of? Oh, maybe I hit the wrong note. Maybe you're going back to the old words that you used to say. Hallelujah. But the Bible teaches me when we are born of God, we overcome the world. And this is the victory that overcomes the world. Even our faith. And the Bible teaches me every way of man is right in his own eyes. But the Lord ponders the path. He ponders the heart of a man. I come to tell you, God going to try everybody. The world going to try you. To see whether you're in the faith or not. This is the time to lose confidence. This is the time to give up and get a hold of God like never before. His covenant did not waver. He struggled in his commitment. And there was Nehemiah when he got the news. His heart became broken. He became so. He went into prayer and fasted. He denied his own flesh. Because of his father's house. Was in turmoil. But the Bible said days passed. But he kept being faithful. The hour has passed. And some of us are still praying over the same situation. But stay faithful. Look at your neighbor and stay faithful. It may look like God has not remembered you. But as somebody, I tell somebody, He still remembers who you are. He knows what you're going through. And like the songwriter said, weeping may endure for a night. But joy will come in the morning. Many of the visions of the righteous, but the Lord shall deliver us out of them all. And Nehemiah now becomes sad in conscience. There's a difference. Let me stop here and slow down a little bit. When you learn how to weep when we learn how to be holy all the time. When we get out of character, for they notice us. But when we are wishy washy, yeah, right. folk don't know whether you say it on Sunday, whether you holy on Monday, whether you running on Tuesday, you cussing on Wednesday, you fussing on Thursday, backbiting on Friday, sad is a down day, show back up on Sunday, and do it all again. But the Lord is with somebody to stand up for righteousness. He lived with somebody to say, For God I live and for God I die. He lived with somebody to look the adversary in the face and say, I'm going to rearrange. No matter what comes or go, I'm going to hold on to God. I'm going to be holy in the morning. I'm going to be holy in the noonday. I'm going to be holy in the evening. I'm going to be holy in the night season. It don't matter the time of the moon. I'm still going to walk around. I'll let nothing separate me.
intercession. You've always been a praiser. You know, every time I see you, you're praising God. You got a praise on your lips. You're dancing and running and shouting. And now all of a sudden you come in here and you got the world on your shoulder. What's wrong with you, man? 21st century talk. Praise the name of the Lord. He said, how can I be rejoicing when my homeland is in turmoil? He said, what you need, Nehemiah? He said, permit me to go home and get my house in order. I got to rebuild the walls. I don't know who's going to help me, but I got a vision from the Lord. Can I bring it home now? God is speaking to somebody when church is over. He said, get your house in order. It's time to clean up. It's time to get right. The Lord is about to come. Ain't no time to fool around. This is the time to live right. This is the time to be holy. Treat your neighbor with respect. Oh, Lord have mercy. Can I preach a little bit longer? The young folk, if you want to live long, respect your parents. Respect your seniors. Have God, I give you days that you don't deserve. I promise you to do it. Because the word of the Lord is right all by itself. I come to tell somebody, you got to know how to believe God when there's things are stacked against you. You got to know how to stand firm when things ain't working out according to your plan. You got to know how to be faithful when things are going no money in your pocket That don't mean be a drug dealer No money in your pocket That don't mean go sell your body No money in your pocket I learned to stand still And see the salvation of the Lord I watch God work Over and over again I watch God pay bills With no money in the bank I watch God get the car running it shouldn't go down. I watch God in my house. When I know it ain't nothing. I watch God keep us. When I've been out of my toilet. All for many years.
person when I never was stuck home. Well, let me give you a secret. Can I get stuff off of you? Can I give you a secret? With, with Jehoshaphat led the battle. He didn't call no deacons. He ain't called no bishops. He ain't called no ushers. He called some praises. He said, I need somebody who had the praise of the Lord. He said, I need the praises to go first. And when the praises start praying, the enemy got defeated. If you want to see a breakthrough in your house, break out in the praises. If you want to see fun in the living, break out in the praises. I dare you to look at your neighbors and neighbor. Praying 
interceding and working and doing things in the kingdom that enhance other people's lives. We have to get over the spirit of jealousy. Whatever God has anointed one to do, that's what the anointing is. You have to occupy in what God has anointed you to do. And God will put it, He'll make it work together. It's a spirit that binds us together. But it's praise that let the enemy know we unify. When the praise is unified, the enemy can confuse. When the praise is unified, I wish I had a lot of more sons of unified praise. I wish I had a lot of more sons of Oh, 
remember this, I'll let you go. I had to go. Remember this. The Bible said every man build a wall in front of his own house. They did it so that the walls were connected. Because they build a wall in front of their own house. When you praise God next to somebody, you connect it. You build in your own wall. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So you don't want nobody to stand next to you when you praise. So just look at me and say, you ain't going to praise him. Don't stand next to me because I'm building. I'm restored. I'm getting my life. I'm getting my joy back. God done gave some of you visions. He done told you how to do businesses. He done done you you've been, oh, I felt that in the spirit. So over here been dreaming about a business. I don't know who it is. You've been dreaming here. You've been questioning. God, I want to do my own business. I'm tired of working for somebody else. I don't know who, we, who you are, but I felt it in the spirit. I felt it in the Holy Ghost. I felt that. I don't know who it is. Hallelujah. I felt it. I felt it. I felt it. I know it's here. Honey, you talk to me after church. I did this so busy. Hallelujah. God didn't drop that in your spirit. That ain't from the devil. Because see, the devil don't want you to prosper. He wants you to be defeated. He wants you to be depressed. But God has put a near my spirit in me. There's got to be a loosening in by the way. That souls can come. Walls got to be restored. Visions, hope, dreams. Quit hanging around folk that, that I call them dream killers. Quit hanging around dream killers. That dream didn't come from the devil. God gave you that dream. He's going to show you how to work. Come on, lift those hands to him. Father, in the name of Jesus, there are those who stand at this altar right now. They're worshiping you in their spirit. Hallelujah. In their spirit, they're worshiping you. I felt it. And that business is going to take off. It's going to take off. It's going to take off. That business is going to take off. That business is going to take off. It's going to take off. Hallelujah. 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 Someone going to work tomorrow. They're frustrated on that job. But I felt a shift in the atmosphere. Hallelujah. The anointing going to be so powerful on you. That they ain't going to be able to understand what's happening. But then you're going to be able to tell this the glory of God. Hallelujah. God is removing fear. He's removing fear. Oh God. Lord, I'm trying to let them vote on my. In the name of Jesus. Bless your people. Bless the Lord. As we restore walls of hope, walls of love and confidence, kindness. We restore these walls in the name of Jesus. There's an anointing on your life right now. There's an anointing on your life right now. In the name of Jesus. Jesus name. Jesus name. Jesus name. Excuse me church. Young ladies. Quit giving yourself to men that don't care. You more precious than me. Young men, respect our young sisters. Quit treat them like they're some boy or something. You treat them like a young lady, they'll act like a young lady. If you're married, Take care of your home. You got no business in nobody's house. I'm sorry, my pastor doesn't kick in. 
I love you. I love you with the love of God. I do all I can to help you. God bless you. I pray God's anointing on you. You have that anointing already in you. Some of you, God is taking you to another level. Don't let fear hold you back. Operate in the kingdom. There are many souls out there need to be saved. He that believe it and is baptized shall be saved. And if you're not baptized in Jesus' name, you need that experience. That's a Pentecost experience that's waiting on you to empower you. Father, in Jesus' name, again, we say thank you. Thank you for the people. Bless them, anoint them, keep them as you take them to a new level. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you.